Guys, the, the zinc plating on the original engine, it goes with this blue so well. All right, Scott, this is my favorite one. <laughs> We're going we're gonna to do a tape of nothing but you saying that about every one of these cars. It'd be like a 30-clip 30, 30 take. <laughs> no, I'm keeping this one. I'm keeping this one. Guys, all the cars that you see in these videos are for sale on my website, www.woodsandbarclay.com. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, welcome back to the series on the surf wagon. Today is detail day. We're going to take the wagon over to Scott and he is going to buff and polish and make this car look amazing. So before we start though, I want to make it easier on Scott. Remember when I was installing all the new suspension, how dirty it was under here we can see you know just dirt and grime uh, under there so i want to go ahead and pressure wash and clean underneath here now uh the way me and scott do this this stuff works excellent um it is well we call it bleach white i, guess, I don't know how you pronounce that it says tire cleaner but if you look close it removes grease, grime, and road film. And this stuff works excellent for cleaning up wheel wells. So we're just gonna spray this all up in here and let it soak in for a little while. There we go, let's get it right in there. Very nice. And then we're gonna hit that with the pressure washer and I'm gonna do that on all four wheels. Now, I highly recommend that you guys stay till after this part of the video and watch when Scott does the detail work because the car is going to be amazing when he's done with it. So let's go ahead and get started on this. There we go, guys. Look how nice it looks in there now. All the original factory blue paint. You can see there's uh, some of the original uh, primer overspray from the factory right down in here. Uh, looks fantastic. So let's go ahead and uh, go to the rear. I'll show you how that one cleans up and then let's go see Scott. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention, I got some new uh, Uniroyal uh, Tiger Paws just mounted on original uh, bunt, on the bu original bunt wheels. Uh, Uniroyal are my favorite. Um, they don't make the Michelins in this tire anymore, but Uniroyal is owned by Michelin, so it's just a different brand. These are my favorite tires for these cars. And I went to uh, RBM Mercedes of Atlanta and got some new wheel center caps. Let's put those on here. There we go. That looks good. Okay, here we are back on the rear. You can see just some dirt and stuff up in there. So here we go. That is the before picture. And there we go. It's still wet and that's the uh, after. You can still, still see that we have the nice factory blue paint in there. You can see there's the uh, overspray where they would spray the rocker panels at the factory. It looks... Uh, Looks fantastic. And of course, everything up in there, I've, I've already replaced all that stuff. So no need, to, no, no need to clean up in there. But that looks fantastic now. Beautiful. Guys, this is the day I've been waiting for. The Surf Blue Wagon, or the Surf Wagon, is finally over at Scott's shop. And I'm so excited to see what he does to this original paint. So obviously we're just starting with a, a basic car wash, and then, you know, a basic clay, uh, clay the original paint, and then Scott will get it into the shop. 
Scott, what do you think about this one? It's blue. That's <laughs> what you said about the last blue one. <laughs> They're all blue. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys, just hang tight, and y'all are going to see the detail uh, series on this video. It's going to take a few days, and uh, you are going to see an incredible wagon, one of the lowest mile wagons in the country. This is uh, after the wagon. Scott's going to work on this Harley. Thing sounds really good. Hey, rev that thing up. <laughs> sounds great. Now it's time to uh, start on the clay, clay bar. And you guys know Scott's process by now. This is just after the initial wash. Um, original paint looks pretty nice right now, but you know, the buffing, polishing, I'm not sure if he's gonna wet sand or not. This is a single stage, and uh, I have a special surprise for you guys on these headlight bezels. Scott's already started taping off trim back there, and then next it'll be a clay bar uh, to remove any contaminants from the paint and then Scott are you gonna wet sand this one or do you not know yet? Oops, I'm still gonna go ahead and try Zach the thing. Try Zach? So we'll do try Zach, buffing, polishing, wax. So I guess four stage and guys I have a surprise for you on these front headlight bezels. So <laughs> that's an original made in Germany, but see it just has a little you can see the light right there a little cloudiness to it it's just not absolutely flawless and then this one oh yeah i've got some very minor i don't know if you guys can even see that in the camera very minor cracking right here so let me show you guys what i've got <clears throat> scott is already back here taping off the trim scott why do you do this because this side trim has a grain to it and if you hit it with a high speed or a polisher or whatever it gets into the grain and it's almost impossible to get the stuff out that's why i do the same thing up here because the the air intakes up front oh, these are the Guys, plastic they always hit these things with yeah high speed. i know you definitely have that's to cover why you've them you've got to tape them off all right guys check this out i found these new old stock Bosch made in Germany. This is the real deal and these are like flawless brand new condition. Look at that. Absolutely beautiful. This is not the reproductions guys made in Germany. These are the real deal. So let's go ahead and get those on the car. All right, still in the prep stage. Uh, I'm about to put the headlight bezels on but first Scott is uh, taping over these original plastic uh, cow vents to protect those keeping the compound out of them as it gets down there's a screen underneath these fins and if the compound gets through you... yeah it's no, messy no getting it out okay guys here's just a little before I re uh, before shot before replacing these original headlight bezels all right, guys, to get these off, there are just these little uh, brack, uh, these little screw-on plastic things on the back. And I'm just reaching. See, there's one right there. I'm just going to get that last one off. I think there's three on each side. And then these just simply slide forward, and then we can replace it. Okay, you can see I have the washer reservoir out in order to reach behind there, but look at the difference, guys. Brand new, and you can see, see how that one has just a little cloudiness, a little fade to it? Let's go ahead and get this one replaced. Okay, I thought these were beautiful, but Scott wants to polish them to make them even more beautiful. So he's got some polishing compound on there and taped off the uh, trim here. Man, it doesn't. <laughs> sorry, what? It doesn't get any better than that. 
Guys, that is as good as it gets. Okay, we're just cleaning off some grease and grime from the uh, window washer fluid reservoir. Um, guys, the way you can get this stuff clean is that is like a carpet brush that comes on the carpet shampoo from the uh, auto parts store. It's like a plastic bristle brush. You use that and spray nine. This stuff is fantastic. Heavy duty cleaner degreaser. And uh, it cleans these up really, really nice. Available at Home Depot. Yeah, you can get this stuff at uh, Home Depot, Advanced Auto. Here we go, guys. There's an after shot of those headlight bezels. I just love fresh headlight bezels. Awesome. I'm going to leave and let Scott uh, start working his magic. He's got everything taped off. Oh, we still got to tape the sunroof gasket up there. And uh, he's going to start the paint correction process. We'll pop off all these uh, emblems so we can clean underneath there. And I will be back tomorrow. I see uh, we have the logos off. See all the dirt that gets behind the logos? We, that's why we always take them off because you want to get all that dirt uh, out from behind the logos. They've been on there for 40 years. How's it going, Scott? Going. Yeah, I've got my blue shirt on in honor of the blue vehicle. <laughs> so I can see that uh, Scott's already done the. Is this Trizac? Yes. So you can see there's some of the pigment on the vehicle, the blue pigment. This is called color sanding. This is how you. Uh, how you make that show car finish. We can see it's already been done on this side. Now, you, guys, you really have to know what you're doing to do this. We can do this on this car because this is original, uh, this is original paint and it's very thick and it's single stage. Um, so you can, you know, it's usually, I guess, what is it, usually four or five mil thick from the factory back then, Scott? Yeah, so you got to be careful. You only you just take off a very, very small amount. But on these old cars, the paint is so thick from the factory, you can do that. Yeah, you can get into trouble with these high-speed buffers. That's why most of these other shops and stuff that you see on television or on the YouTube videos, these guys are all using random speed uh, orbitals. So you can turn the speed up on those or turn them all the way down, so they're just going like this. Yeah. But if... You put a high speed in their hands, duck, <laughs> because they they don't they don't know anything about high speed. You never see uh, you never see this in these in the YouTube videos. That's why. Well, I guess you see them in my YouTube videos. <laughs> All right, Scott, what's the process you're going through on this vehicle? I can see you've already started the Trizac. Yeah, we hand washed the vehicle first, pulled it in, then I just. Figured to go ahead and try Zach to finish anyway. And, and try Zach. Try Zach is an ultra fine paper. What is it like six thousand? No, it's three thousand. It's three thousand. No, okay. I have personally. I've got papers all the way up to eight thousand. So three thousand is usually where we'll start on these vehicles, though. Yeah, most shops you're going to see they may use try Zach or they may stop at two thousand. And the reason why I do that is because it cuts down the finish with a uniformity so that when I go to buff and use a compound it doesn't take as much but I mean you're you still have to buff out the sanding areas but it's you don't have to be as aggressive and it gives you a very slick nice looking finish oh yeah I mean this is like these finishes you're doing are like Pebble Beach Amelia Island concourse events Okay, so I can see you just finished the Trizac on the sides, but it looks like you've already moved to buffing. So I guess you've already Trizac'd the hood. Yeah, I've, everything that you see that's got this powder on it. That's the Trizac. That's 
from doing the trizac. So that's finish. that's after the clay bar, and then the next step is what you started on the hood, and this is buffing. Yeah, that's that's buffing on that side, um, and what I'm stepping to right now is using my. This is a random speed orbital. Okay. With variable speed, uh, and I'm going to a foam pad with with has got like a felt. On. Yeah. That's a very unique pad. You don't see that type of pad a lot. No. A lot of people use strictly foam. Yeah. I use this. I That's mean, almost you, like a foam slash you could, wool. You could use this outside in direct sunlight, and it won't leave swirl marks. Okay. The foam pad, surprisingly enough, will leave, swir will leave swirl marks. Let's show these guys how that thing operates. And you don't press down, guys. You just yeah. use... Uh, enough, enough weight to keep this in contact with the surface. Now guys, he's not mashing down on that. He's just resting his hand on there. notice how everything's taped off and we've, we've bent the emblem forward so it stays out of the way. All the gaskets, see all the sunroof gaskets, everything's taped off so you don't get any of this stuff on any of the trim. Okay, so after, keep in mind, so first he tries act and then you wiped that off with a towel, right? The try after you try okay you just went straight to buffing okay and then he's just buffed this little section right here and now he's going to wipe that off and i'll show you where we're at but there's still like two more steps after this and you got to do all these steps on the entire vehicle so now we're really so this is like two steps into the pro well wash clay Trizac buff. So this is like the fourth step. And you can see kind of what we're getting to now. I mean, look at that, guys. <laughs> That's beautiful. This is my favorite part of restoring these cars, Scott, is taking them to you and getting to see what they're going to look like. It's getting, like... Getting that joy uh, it, fireworks effect. Ooh, it's, it's just ah. so amazing. <laughs> okay, so again, this is not the final step. After this, now he has to do that around the entire car. Then it's polishing, which is just a milder compound yeah, and a different, a different pad too, right? Yeah. And then after polishing, then you apply the wax. And don't you put like a sealant also, or is well, the wax the sealant? A sealer wax. A sealer wax. That's the uh, like the pink sauce. Again, I don't use ceramic coat. No, we don't do ceramic coat, guys. And I've talked about that before. That ceramic coat bonds with that original paint. And to get it off, you literally have to sand it off. I literally just had to deal with that. A customer bought a car in Washington State, had it shipped here. The car had scratches and stuff all over in it. And I had to uh, try and fix it. So I was doing it, in, in, in essence, the same way I'm doing this. Yeah, you got to sand it off. When I went to start the buffing process on it, it would not buff out. Because of the uh, ceramic coat. Ceramic coat that blocks stuff, you from buffing. You can't fix the finish. I did, but it took me three days. And it is no fun. And guys, I don't like to do it because we go old school. Buff, polish, nice coat of wax. And look, wax your car twice a year. And and just take care of it, park it inside, and uh, and then you'll never and you'll never mess up this original paint by getting the ceramic coating into the paint. It just keeps getting better, man. And guys, you know, keep in mind these are forty-year-old cars. Uh, with an original paint car like this, there's gonna be flaws. And that's why we do this, because there's no such thing as a 40-year-old classic car that doesn't have flaws in the original paint. 
I mean, it was sealed in a hermetically sealed environment. <laughs> yeah. No one ever get around it. And it, it was, you can't drive a car and expect the paint never to get a little rock chip or something in it. So I actually had some, uh, you know, paint mixed up uh, for this paint code. And we did, like you can see, I did some touch ups. Now we haven't buffed and polished over here, but you see, there's some little touch ups. There's like one, yeah, there's one little touch up right. I don't know if you can see it. It's barely. There we go. See, there's a little touch up right there. Like that's unavoidable on uh, classic cars. So, but there's no way in heck we would repaint a hood just because of, you know, touch up spots because that original paint is way more valuable than a repaint. Yeah. And there's no miracle stuff out there that you're going to put on the car and it's going to fill in all the chips and stuff and no, nothing is going to be visible. It just, doesn't yeah, I mean, it's part of the, if you want a nice original paint car, that's what you have to deal with. And we, we do as best we can to make them, uh, make them flawless again. Even some of the old Ferraris and Lamborghinis have flaws in them. You know, I mean, I've worked on them. They're, they're not ultra perfect. Yeah. You know? There's no such thing as a perfect classic car. I mean, unless it's been meticulously restored and it is taken out only once or twice a year. Yeah, and even then you're risking a, a rock chip or something. Guys, check that out. Doesn't get any better than that. Unless you don't drive it. Yeah. That is a beautiful, that's an original Mercedes bunt. And I just put the tires on here. I love the Uniroyal Tiger Paw. I use those on every car. They're actually made by Michelin. A lot of people don't know that, but you can't buy the Michelin Defenders for in this tire size anymore. <laughs> Guys, we got people walking in off the street into the detail shop trying to buy the car. <laughs> look at this. Scott just finished the uh, roof. Look how, look, you can see the reflection of the ceiling. Look how amazing that looks. It's been Scott coated. Wow. Hang on, let me see if I can get a better shot back here. There we go, guys. Look at that finish. Scott, that's incredible. No, it's great, Scott. You can get all sorts of up top shots from this one. Nice. It's pretty, pretty, pretty lighting for this thing yeah, right it's remarkable, man. I might like this better than Midnight Blue. What was Gary's? Midnight Blue. Yeah, his was that darker blue. His, his looks black. Yeah, this, this is, man, this is impressive. Wow. Guys, the, the zinc plating on the original engine it goes with this blue so well all right scott this is my favorite one <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna do a tape of nothing but you saying that about every one of these cars it'd be like a 30 30 clip take <laughs> no i'm keeping this one i'm keeping this one this is some of my best work guys for some reason, that plating up on this motor looks really nice. It does, man. It just it came out amazing. All right, Scott is up front working on. He's still buffing and polishing, and I'm back here, guys. This is the original Pirelli tire on the original bunt wheel. Uh, that has never been mounted on a car. And also, right here on the, uh, there's the turbo diesel emblem. Okay, here's the 300D emblem. And I noticed, not sure if you can see it in the camera, but the black, see there's a black line that goes across right under the letters or the numbers. But it, it's, it's faded just a little bit. So, Cody, thank you very much. Cody gave me this new old stock, never been installed. There we go. Look at this, you guys. 
Look at that. Brand new, out of the Mercedes wrapper. There we go. Never been installed on the vehicle, on a vehicle. And look how bright that black is. So I'm gonna put that emblem back on here so it's brand new. Now, also underneath here, I have been polishing. So I've got polish with, uh, and this is some quadruple or four aught steel wool. So I'm polishing under this bumper. There you go, you can see when the polish comes off, how nice it looks. So let me go ahead and finish doing that and I'll show you all the finished product. I gotta do along here too. All right, we're just gonna apply the chrome polish all back here to the bumper and I'll show you what I'm taking that off in a minute. Okay guys, we got polish applied to the seal in the cargo area and all along the bumper and I've got it all applied under the bumper and Scott's over there making fart sounds no, and seal, seal sounds. <laughs> and so I'm gonna let that dry for a little while then I'll wipe it off with a microfiber in the meantime I'm gonna go do the front bumper while that's drying okay I've moved to the front bumper and I've got it all polish uh, polish applied on the top underneath here and let me see if I can get down here you want that blanket? there we go no I'm fine I've got all the polish under here. Now we're just gonna let that dry before I wipe it off. But next, I'm going to clean, you see this is dirty, this front valence under here. Uh, I'm gonna clean that with bleach white. Bleche white wite. <laughs> yeah, bleach, bleach white. That stuff works great. It says it's for tire cleaner, but guys, this stuff, uh, Break dust, grease, grime, it's awesome. So let me get started cleaning down here. All right, there we go. That is all nice and clean on that metal front valence. All right, time to do the, remove the bumper polish. Look at that, you guys. There we go. We are done polishing look at that remarkable and we also polished under the bumper let's see if you can see that there we go it is just as shiny under the bumper and we cleaned up that front valence all right we're just removing the polish back here God look how nice that comes out with a little polish off the bumper here oh, there's some fingerprints still right there yeah, all right Scott all Scott has the the polish here just getting it off this mirror Wow, look how, look how nice that shined up there. And gotta go, I gotta go around all, and do all the anodized aluminum trim. It's uh, starting to get late at night, so we might have to come back tomorrow. All right guys, we're gonna go ahead and shampoo the carpets. Let this soak in for a little while, and then we use the uh, brush to clean it off. All right, let that sit for a little while.
All right, now we need to let this shampoo, um, uh, let this dry. So we got to sit out here for a while. That's perfectly clean. I got all the grains going the same way. As you can see a little bit of white, that's where it's still wet. So we need to let it dry and then we can cover it with protective plastic. All right guys, while I'm waiting on the carpets to dry, see this is the rubber like uh, panel that comes up under the car. See we have some dirt up in there and this is uh, just all dirty. So to clean that, uh, again, we use this. It works excellent. Uh, bleach white it says tire cleaner it works excellent on all kinds of rubber and suspension but you just want to lightly spray it on there don't get it on the interior or anything and we'll do a little right here all right and then we'll let that soak for a second and when it's done we can use a brush to clean it and then wipe it off and I'll show you what it looks like uh, when we're done okay it's not quite dry but you can see let me get up there and wipe a little bit more along that top part. There we go. Anyway, a little more elbow grease here. Let's see how nice it comes out. So, let me finish cleaning all the underside of the doors. And we also do it right along this rubber piece right here. All right. These carpets cleaned up beautifully. Time to go ahead and wrap it. They're dry. There's the... Uh, the back seat one's there, I just cleaned those. And then there's the passenger seat I had laying up here drying. And uh, let's see if I can get this one down for you guys. There you go. These just came out absolutely beautiful. So let's now get these uh, recovered with uh, plastic. All right, I'll just wrap that up there. Okay, and then I'll just trim around with a razor blade, tuck it under there, and we'll get it back in the car. All right, there we go. Let's go ahead and get this mounted back in the car. All right, guys, we've also cleaned and wiped down under here. Uh, that gray, that's just like the normal primer paint, you know, Mercedes would have over here. They'd have a little blue on there. And uh, there's a little trash right there I didn't get out. Let me get that out of here. So that's all been wiped down and clean. Let's get our mat back in there. All right, guys, there we go. All nice and protected. Now I just need to finish the rest of the floor mats and then we need to vacuum around the edges right in here and clean up the door seals or the trim pieces right here. All right, guys, we are moving to the interior now and we have some, uh, I don't know if you guys can see them. Yeah, I see some fingerprints on the, uh, yep, see all the fingerprints right in there from when I was installing all the wood. So we're going to polish the wood now. And really on this wood, since it has a polyester resin um, coating on it, really you can just use your regular old glass cleaner on a rag, just a little bit. And all of those fingerprints come right off. There we go. Oh, missed a little spot right there. There we go. I mean, that easy. The polyester resin lets you clean up uh, things really, really easily. So here we go, guys. That interior is done. All refinished wood. I put, have the gear shifter back so I can clean. I'm gonna polish around the buttons down there a little more. The dash, immaculate perfect condition this is as good as it gets you guys all right there we go done polishing beautiful condition all right guys now I'm doing the interior of all the windows and you want to leave the exterior till last 
uh, because all your cleaning agents always get on the exterior, so you always leave the outside for last. Can't even tell the windows there, can you? Okay, guys, we have been doing interior detailing for hours today. And I think it's just about wrapped up. Scott's going to finish waxing and polishing the roof. That's the, the plastic cover we had on the car overnight. And... Scott, do you need this rag? Uh, yeah. There you go. We're just cleaning the front seats. All the plastic is wrapped on the floor, more, floor mats. Yeah. Everything is done, you guys. On the interior, got the rear uh, mats vacuumed, shampooed, and wrapped. All the windows clean. I don't know if this comes out in the camera well, but uh, yeah, vacuumed back here. Got some funny light coming in from over here, but that's okay. It's not funny light, it's me. <laughs> ah, there's my fingerprint. Look, I have a big handprint right there. I need to get that off. <laughs> Look, right there. That's my handprint. <laughs> Okay, I've been going all over the anodized aluminum with a little, you can use a little polishing compound and just rub it and wipe it off. And uh, all this looks just absolutely brilliant. It doesn't really come through in the camera well, but it looks really good. Here, let's go look at the, uh, let's go around and look at the other side. Oh, good. We got the detail lights over here, so it should light. There we go. You can see it much better over here. Very shiny. There we go. All right. That's about it for detailing so far. And like I said, we have to take the plastic cover off. Scott needs to polish up here. Then we'll put a coat of wax on it and she's done. Okay, guys, it's Friday night coming up on like eight o'clock. Scott and I have both been working on this vehicle for the last two days. We, we have like 18 hours into this detailing. Scott is just finishing the final wax and we are done. How's your lower back, Scott? Very, very sore. <laughs> All right, let's walk up here and take a final look. Guys, this is arguably the nicest original wagon I have ever seen. Scott, have you seen me bring one in here this nice? No. Nope. Yeah, no. This, uh, it, it really doesn't get any better than this. I mean, initially when we first started doing these things, it was all just the four-door sedans. Yeah, it's like and all then, of a then sudden. All of a sudden, it was a raining down. Yeah, like wagons, wagons never showed up at the shop, and then this past year, like four wagons came in all at the same time. Okay, let's walk around to. I mean, the wheels, tires, everything. Uh, we've done the bumpers, polished all the chrome, uh, all the trim, all of it. Um, and guys, that is the new old stock. Never been installed on a car. Original Mercedes emblem. Cody actually brought me that. Thank you very much, Cody. It's This is the perfect car for it. Absolutely remarkable. Here, let's, let's show you guys the interior. Okay, interior. Completely done. All the wood. All polished. The dash is perfect. Here we go, guys. See, 65,623 miles. Absolutely gorgeous. 
All right, guys, so that is it for the detailing video. I don't even know if I need to do a walk around video after. I mean, we went into such great depth on this detailing video, but uh, tomorrow or Sunday, I will do the uh, walk around video. And this car is done and officially for sale. Hope you enjoyed it. On the website, I think there's 10, a 10 part video series showing everything that was done to this vehicle. This wagon is done and ready to go. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.